<laughs> hey, welcome to More Than Hashtags, a practical social media podcast with Adam Lidecker and Vince Norlick. That provides real application, what's working, what's trending, what's next, and sometimes we just talk about cool stuff. So I'm Adam Lidecker, Director of Social Strategy at Auto Radio, O-T-T-O Radio. And I'm Vincent Orlick, CMO at Brandish Social Media and President of Social Media Club, both here in Phoenix. Welcome to the next amazing episode. Hey, Vincent. What's up, hey, Adam? It's been a busy week. It's been redonkulous. So we're recording uh, during the day, a day late, two days late. Oh, two days late. But hey, oh, very much so. But no, no one has to know that. They do now. But we made a commitment, and Vincent is not recording in the garage. I am not in the garage, but I still have a fan on me because it's 109 degrees. And next week it's in Phoenix. 120. Yeah, I mean, look, this is what we. This is the reality of of living do. in the paradise that is known as Phoenix. <laughs> you, we're we're ready for it. All of our homes have central air for the most part. Um, a lot of houses have pools. There's pools, public pools that are fun. There's splash pads, which if you have kids are major key. And if you don't have kids. <laughs> if you don't have kids, stay away from them because that's <laughs> it's a bad look. Don't go to the splash pads if you don't have kids, okay? Yeah, Just, I'll be, I'm done with my first world problems. I'm done. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I don't complain about it being hot. I love it. I will, I, as I'll go to my grave saying uh, I will take the heat over the snow and raking leaves and uh, shoveling. Yep. We are both snow. Yeah. We are both from the East Coast, so we know. Uh, Do not I, miss I, it. I swear I threw my back out almost every winter. <laughs> we, had a, we had a corner lot, a little 1880s Victorian with blue slate roofs and that snow. And I had to pile it or shovel it. And yeah. I'll and do that's it. just the maintenance at your, at your home. Like, forget about driving in it. And look, it was great. School got canceled or something. Or, you know, most of the time you still went into work. And that wasn't fun driving in a lot of times the snow because it was, depending where you live, they're either prepared and they deal with it really well or they don't deal with it well at all. And I went through both. Rhode Island deals with it really pretty well. They have a lot of state workers plowing the roads and they're ready in the middle of the night. That's Maryland, because the mafia <laughs> runs all the <laughs> Shh. I live in Arizona. Quiet. I, I didn't um, say that. I didn't there's say that. A, but I also lived in Maryland. And Maryland oh, does not true. get snow. It's 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 uh, mid Atlantic coast. They get some snow, but they get more of like the the rain sleet. And when it snows really heavy, they're not ready with plows and um, ready to get rid of the snow. It usually sticks around <laughs> on the roads and it, like it's there for days and it's a mess. And it's ice, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. So Packed yeah, in. these kids ready. don't know how how good or bad they have it because they don't have the snow days. They don't. Uh, yeah. I don't think they ever take days off here. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, they go back to school in like July, <laughs> Here, July and August. But anyway, well, we wanted to talk to, about a couple of things. One of the topics is, is a more than hashtags, truly more than hashtags topic. And the other one is, uh, is more practical. So unless you've been hiding under a rock and haven't checked Facebook today at all, you have seen the uh, internet giant behemoth uh, seller of from A to Z, correct? Uh, bought, oh, sorry, Amazon. Uh, bought Whole Foods. So that has been kind of dominating most people's feeds. Uh, Walmart also bought Bonobos, which is a pants maker, but I kind of took second note to uh, one of the largest acquisitions. Uh, How much did they pay, Adam? Uh, almost, Amazon. Depending on who you ask, the, the, pri the price of a uh, Southern Wall. <laughs> One one of the estimates they paid exactly uh exactly what a southern wall would cost according to one person, which is which is great not to get political but it's great that uh if if you're someone that believes in building the wall and or if you are the person responsible for claiming that it will get built um, versus feeding people you know yeah versus feeding people but the person that wants to build the wall um he who shall not be named uh he he uh. Why not go to Amazon and be like, hey, man, you guys got a lot of money. Why don't you help us build that wall? Like, you, get, you, you know the art of the deal? Oh, I was actually thinking, this, like, <laughs> you know, if we want to live in a country where the government, government takes over companies, uh, yeah. no. in any case, uh, it's big news. Yeah. And 
a lot of people, there's a lot of jokes, you know, Whole Foods and Whole Check, and, uh, but it's availability of fresh produce. And we all know what Amazon is, is low price, free shipping on time. And uh, so if you can picture marrying those two, I think it's a perfect deal. Uh, really where, where Vincent and I took it was, um, you know, if you go back, they kind of put out, put the bookseller out of business. Uh, Barnes and Noble Borders is gone, but thriving independent mom and pop bookstores are doing great. They're using social, they're building community. So we kind of th started thinking about the same thing with, um, well, I think middle size and larger grocery stores are having a little midlife crisis right now, but maybe there's a situation for, for smaller stores to build this loyalty, this experience um, and use social uh, to be useful, helpful videos, how to's um, create this whole experience. So I don't, I wouldn't think it's like a total grocery apocalypse for the little, the little guy, but I mean, what do you, what were you saying about your thoughts? I think it's funny uh, that I happen to be part of a, a panel next week at changing hands bookstore um, about social media. And now that this happened and you're, you're tying it to that, like love changing hands. Yeah, of course. It's a, it's a local, uh, I think it's, they're local, right? They're not, or are they as West far, Coast or? I mean, as far as I know, I think just local. I mean, I went to, I mean, they've had, here's where I have experiences. They have authors come in to speak there and for signings. And that's still, right. you, can't, you can't replicate that or duplicate that on Amazon. So, right. But it's, but they also have the, the, uh, the reading hours for kids and the moms and, and go and, sit there and they'll read read that and they do the author um readings and, and, and it seems like and i i have a half price books by me go a little south there's a changing hands the staff loves working there sure i mean it seems like take it seriously they're a little wor wor they're a little weird a little quirky but they're very serious and it seems like they love it you know because i think they're they're a clientele um so anyways continue about your uh amazing panel which i didn't know no, about. <laughs> no I, I, i'm not trying to plug the panel i just think it's because i was just talking to um i was just on the on the phone today with our the moderator of our panel that'll be happening next week brandy from um dtphx and we were talking about you know what are we going to talk about what's which way which way do we want to take it and um you know now that this happened with amazon it it, it kind of ties into the bookstore aspect where yeah, there's some of those bigger bookstores left in, in um, I know here in, in the Phoenix area, we have a couple, but they're in like outdoor malls or right. bigger malls. Right. And it's, it's purely, it feels purely, purely like a, a spot. Like it's just a, a place to, to kind of spend time, like not necessarily buy anything, but I know as the husband, when I'm there with the wife and the kids, I will generally kind of go over to the bookstore <laughs> and there's also a, usually a playground a kids play area right in front of the bookstore um which is convenient but but aside from that it's just it's interesting how um that now that this happened i feel like we might kind of potentially talk about that at that yeah because i i see like i see a lot of corollary with retail businesses um old mainstays uh, creating experiences. Well, one of the things I was I was looking at last year, last year I did a deep dive and really looked into Sprouts, Healthy Markets. And the thing about Sprouts was they were, they were I think it was like 50 or $80 per basket, like $50 per basket per trip per person, creating this experience, um, fresh, you know, it was like affordable Whole Foods, no offense to the Amazon Whole Foods deal. <laughs> that was kind of the thing. Um, but they were creating experience. Specifically, last year they got, or the previous year, got a new CEO creating 150 digital jobs and was really going all in on social channels, on content, on creating this community, but with useful, helpful content. So if you're, you're you know, a lot of times, what are you gonna eat, eat tonight? Well, if they're like dropping these sweet videos, these short videos, these tutorials, these blog posts or Pinterest pages, anything really, um, you can set yourself apart. So I think if you look across the board, oh, that's what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> uh, Alamo Draft House is a movie theater, which I love. They do a ton of this really fun stuff on Facebook. Most of what I learn and know about what's coming 
is either an email newsletter from them or Facebook posts. They use uh, Facebook ca event calendars very efficiently. So you can RSVP to these. They had a showing or maybe have a showing of Cars 3. It's my daughter in the background there. Wow, she uh, made, a, made a card for me, a Valentine's Day card in June. <laughs> she put it up there pretty high. And taped it to the, almost to the, to the ceiling. It's up on the wall really high. Wow. Uh, so in any case, <laughs> they have a showing of Cars 3, but it was, uh, this is awesome. It was like five bucks. I don't know how they did so cheap. Maybe it was five bucks. But what they did is it was car, a showing of Cars 3 at 1030 in the morning, an unlimited cereal bar. <gasps> so you could literally. Oh, man. But like, see what I mean? Like what you just said, like, who does that? Well, you know what though? But that it's the experience because because they have they, a bar, they have a bar. Yeah, but yep. at ten thirty in the morning, they can just like do. Yep. The, they have they also serve giant bowls of popcorn. So why not fill those with cereal? <laughs> exactly. And and to your point of the the five dollar, like, how do they make money? Is it it's, how do they even make money? I they, maybe I'm they're sure not. The ticket, I'm sure the ticket was actually more. Um, well, no, but, but, but my I point think, is... I think I'm confusing it because sometimes they do these parties and it's like five bucks. Uh, they, I, knew, I know they do kids showings. It's like yeah, dollar, three dollars, five dollars. Well, they do make money because they serve amazing food and beverage yeah. there. So, but but let's, say, let's, say they, let's say the tickets were five dollars. Even at that, maybe they're not making a ton of money. Maybe they're just even breaking even on the movie tickets. But they're getting in this whole group of people right. that maybe have never been there, likely have never been there. Yeah. Or, or like someone told them to go, you need to check this out. Like it's, it's just a whole new audience than would typically be there at night when there's alcohol being served. And so they do the movie dinners. parties, they do yeah. the exclusives in these parties and maybe not make a lot, but then when that blockbuster comes out and you go on that date night, you're dropping 50, 60 bucks, but you're willing to do that because it's such an experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I've gone to the big theaters and they, all right, I'm getting the M and M's, I'm getting the soda, I'm getting this going all out we got kids we never go to the movie theater but it's still that much anyway but now it's like you don't mind because it's like it is a total i took my friend down there the other day uh, my friend jeff he he owns crepe bar and i he i send i take my friends to crepe bar because it's such an experience and i want to hit, show him an experience we went back. so i and but and i'm tagging people on facebook all the time yeah like when i see something they post something on facebook i'm like look at this like Ghostbusters party and they give you like, you know, a prop or something. Um, I think that could scale. I think it could scale to book club, to bookstores and mom and pop grocery stores. Um, it'd be but look, it's, it's, it's limited by your own creativity and willingness to, to do this type of stuff. It's really at this point with what's available online and the, the ability to get the word out about things. It's, there's not, a limit except if you put limits on it yourself no i think it's i think it's right i mean i i was saying earlier on the call i think i hear your daughter in the background oh boy i was saying uh earlier this is this is when you commit to podcasts and just do it no matter what um yeah. I, I almost here this is where i was going to record today uh, i need to get an oil change before i head out to san francisco next week okay go to rolling rust but when i yeah, <laughs> for stuff well my mine are included, so I'm gonna go to the place up here. But I don't really it's not a very enjoyable experience to be honest. Oh. But I can set up my computer and I was actually gonna podcast from there and work from there as well. Uh but I'm gonna go in tomorrow at like seven forty five. They have Wi Fi, yeah. Yeah, I Dude, I honestly like that's one of the not to not to pimp it out, but but like at Rolling Rust they do have uh really cool stuff like all around and, yeah. and plus they usually do have like a like a car in there that they're working on oh, like an old car restoring. even awesome. though that's not the, that's not like the focus of the business it's it's a part of it they're they're definitely like just a full service yeah it's like going to like shop a, you know an old west wild west themed restaurant or something where you can like get a bucket of peanuts and drop the shells on the floor <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean yeah i think more and more when big tech companies are buying other companies up and people are speculating what's going to happen we do live in communities with people. Now in Arizona, we have a lot of walls. It's a little bit harder to get to know your neighbors, but we do live in communities. And uh, we were talking about like European towns where you're, you know, romance a little bit, where you're walking home and getting your fresh bread and your meats and your baguettes. Literally shop every single day for food. I would love to do that. Mm, I'm not done with that. I mean, I, I, I sometimes <laughs> shop that way now, which is very inefficient. 
it takes up yeah. a lot of time. Um, but I think like there are small like I I just I actually just picked up my daughter from from uh, camp at the botanical garden. She was at a summer camp Tell this week. Tell what I made. What'd you make? Look behind you. Oh, she wants everyone to know that she made me a uh, an I love you Valentine's Day card. And no, the mountain. Oh, and she also made a mountain. <laughs> she drew on the wall. Well, I guess what I was going to say is on the way home from the botanical garden. I stopped at this place called Ch- Chula Seafood, Ch- Chahula, Chula, mm-hmm. fantastic. And I got, we got my wife's craving a poke bowl, got a poke bowl right before I left town. All, that's all they do. They go fish in San Diego. They have a shop in San Diego and a shop here. So they go fish, they bring it here, they have their, their case and they sell through it and they love what they do and people love, love what they offer in their service. Um, I see their posts every day on Instagram mouth-watering posts <laughs> on Instagram or Facebook. I see my friends posting that they're eating there. Um, you know, that's Instagram and restaurants is a no-brainer. But it does come down to building a local community and, 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 and serving them. So, well, and also, also in, the, in the, the areas like in New York City, you know, like it, are they – I haven't been there in quite a while. Um, the, the way that you live in a city like New York – and in the neighborhood um, in New York City is you, there's not a supermarket. Right. There's a neighborhood grocer. Like a of course, little, yeah. Like little if you watch day, Seinfeld, yeah. yeah. If you watch Seinfeld and you see like that, I that's it's dated, but it's also still a reality. Like, yeah. like growing up on uh, in Rhode Island, there were places that were, we had the bigger supermarkets, but then we also had the places that were just the fruit store. You would go to just the fruit place, and it was it was the the place to go for fruit and produce. You I know, think that's fantastic. I mean, it might be a little romantic to think like reminisce and go back, but I think I mean, there's a guy in New Orleans. I saw a video on Facebook about him, uh, the big story, um, that website that CNN CNN runs, and he's like he's like the fruit guy. He drives through neighborhoods and he has this like jingle he yells out. Sure. Everybody knows him. And of course, that's what you're saying. You're going, he's driving into a food desert and he's providing uh, neighborhoods with, with produce when nobody else had. I mean, we're, he's literally an Amazon Prime now driver. Yeah, we're going backwards. We're Perfect. going backwards to the milk, dri- milk delivery. So the milk <laughs> delivery, the, the, the individual people that would come to your. Well, so some of it is, right? Because some mail is, delivery yeah. is, is going down the tubes, but this other specialized food delivery potentially with someone like that now is that on the main the main scale of things no i mean that's a limited thing yeah um but it could you know you could you could do, we we have in our neighborhoods here there's ice there's the ice cream man but there's also the elote guy there's the uh, which there's guys that ride they have these like bikes with big like coolers on them and they ride around the neighborhoods and they bring mexican uh, delicacies like desserts well Elo- elote do you know what elote is tell me my friend elote well i'm gonna i'm not gonna describe it right but guys anyone that wants to find out google is it kinda like shaved ice no it's it's um oh, man it's because they do the thing with the corn on the cob and then they put this the mexican sour cream on it i think and then gotcha. chili and like it's 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 this weird combination but it's delicious and it's kind of like the ice cream truck but uh but more, more hearty. <laughs> it's awesome. I was just out in your neighborhood. I went over to uh, the Empanada's place, and uh, oh. and I was driving down the Daddy. street to go over there. Can I just tell him how big my my mountain? Oh, is. she built a mountain for everyone. But tell how big, tell him. Wow, how I'm gonna have to clean that up after the show. That's tell cool. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. So can you see how large it is? She basically took every blanket, towel, and pillow in our house and piled it up. So, hey, she's got a great creativity. I'm not going to limit that. <laughs> Although I'm going to have her help me clean it up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. That looks like something my three-year-old would do. Oh, so I was driving down, and I saw this, like, sign in this truck out in front of this house. And it was for just, just for a barbecued chicken, just for polo. It, but it literally was in somebody's, like, their front door was open, and they had a little grill out there. Um, that's awesome. I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't fly up in, up here in uh, Scottsdale, but back east, I mean, 
there was a lot of those like side of the road uh, vegetable stands because everybody had little gardens. Oh, that was the other thing. I mean, in the summertime, specific things. You know, in Rhode Island, it's very it's it's the ocean state. It's it's the beach. If you live in in oh, Providence, totally. right? I mean, you're you're a half hour from the beach at most. So yeah. any beach. Um, so on the way to the beach, I mean, I have vivid memories of driving on the road and in the summertime like you would you would know that these same people <laughs> every summer would be out there one one group of people the, the farmers or whatever or, or it could just be regular people that grew this stuff to, to sell it in the summer they'd be selling corn on the cob we'd always get fresh corn on the cob on the on the way to the beach or on the way home usually on the way home and then we'd eat it at home we peel it we'd shuck it and eat, and cook it up watermelon same thing peaches like Peaches on the side of the road were like the biggest thing of all time. You buy the peaches and the oranges on the side of the road. Is it, I wonder if it's like, it was probably like that guy's grove. Well, yeah, I, I don't think it was like the main, the main uh, source of income for these people. I think it was just people that lived on the way to the yeah. beach, right? And they decided, oh, let's plant some peaches and then we can just sell them to people. It was literally just like a cardboard sign. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it, it was just that. And it wasn't a truck. It was like, they're sitting outside their house. <laughs> I think like, sign. That stuff will prob- hopefully always be around in some form or fashion. But um, they could totally run a Facebook ad now. You can't. You think about like, <laughs> you think, no, but you think about you the, totally co- could. the Koji food trucks, right? Yep. He became popular because he tweeted a location and boom, he was flooded. He sold out. Um, you, you drive up toward Cave Creek. Every once in a while, there's this guy. He has his pickup truck in his barbecue pit on a trailer in the back i never know when he's there but i'll tell you what like a geolocation ad wouldn't cost him cost him much oh well what about i have i still have yet to go but i have friends that go religiously little miss barbecue little miss is, gr- is great I've been it's like one- the best one everyone will they'll argue that that's the best one it's, it's absolutely in the top it according is. to everybody but but what do they do like you have to go there Mm-hmm. You have to you have to wait for them to open, and there's, there's a line. You at have least, to wait in line. At least a half an hour. Yeah, and people wait even in the summer. Even in the summer, people will go and wait in line outside um, for them to open and be ready for we them. Go because it's been we a while should. since I've been there. I've never been. And uh, then, but then they also have a limited amount, right? Like they, they run out. When they, they cook sell, a certain amount, that's it. Yep, and they do customer service stuff. Like when you're yep. in line, they give you little bottles of water. When you get up there, the guy is like literally giving, putting people's plates together, but then he has, he's slicing little sausages and giving you one. He's slicing some brisket, handing it to you. Wow. A lot of customer like service goes into that, and they're also posting on social. I mean, the, when they, a lot of places will have a special, hey, got this five pounds of brisket in. It's yep. going to go quick. Get on down here. Um, but it's also an experience. It, fall, it falls into that. And then the reason I, I ever even saw it the first time is because my friend that I, I, we are connected on Snapchat. He would like always snap that they were going down when they were there. They were, like waiting in line a little bit as barbecue again, love it. And it's like, you see, I, I never would have myself. I don't think I ever would have found it for a long time before that. So I I'm a fan and I've never been there. That's, that's what that says about that. I mean, it's good barbecue and it costs money. It's good barbecue. It costs money. Cause they're out there smoking for, yeah, I, mean, I know his whole backstory. It's fantastic because his wife's from Austin. He spent summers there, fell in love with barbecue, and started cooking. And then people are like, "Oh, you should compete." He started competing. And he started winning every single one. Huh. So really, his influence is Austin, which I love Austin barbecue. Um, but he's here. But he's here because he's, he's here, here. and no one, no down one talks by, about Phoenix the, barbecue down by the airport. <laughs> it's great. Cheap. Everybody talks about Kansas City and North Carolina and Texas. And where else? I don't know. But but people don't really talk much about Arizona barbecue when they, they should. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll tell you what, though. Like, I mean, all these big acquisitions, this is why we're talking yeah. about more than hashtags because it does apply and does think you know, it's not the end of the world. I know a lot of like a lot of big supermarkets are thinking, trying to catch up with home delivery. But you know what? Web, web van was 1999, 2000 with a crash. So home delivery of groceries with web van. Um, now it just caught up. People have iPhones. People have a lot of things happen. Oh, it's another thing that, yeah, it's taken time. I remember there was Peapod. Peapod was, yeah. a, was something that was early 2000s, like 2003. 
Yeah. Or so, and, and it didn't catch on. It just, right. you know, it was, it was at a time people were not ready for it. Um, different generation, you could even say. I mean, that was over a decade ago, 15 years ago. And yeah. it just, in that, in that part of the country or really anywhere, it didn't catch on. Now, I, a good couple of years ago, again, I definitely saw Walmart trying to do promotions and, and campaigns for their grocery delivery. Sure. Um, had some orange signage, I remember, <laughs> in the store. And, and it was like this thing about showing you like how it worked. And here, be the first to like sign up for it and test it out. So they've been on that road too. Like it's, it's been on everyone's minds because they all know or they feel like they know that that's the next, the next step. Because especially now with where we have things like Trunk Club or um, uh, Birchbox or whatever, where yeah, everything or, gets delivered. Yeah. Even, even food, you know? Yeah. Dollar Shave Club. Like it's, it's, it's too convenient to pack and, and the price is too right. Something like right. Dollar Shave Club, like it's, it saves me $15 a month since I started using it from buying razors myself. Yeah. So the, the price point, it works and it's a good product. So, and it's easy. It just shows up right when I need it to. It's down to that. We were, even, we were even talking about like, I wouldn't go crazy thinking like Amazon's going to put Whole Foods employees out with Am- Androids and, and algorithms. I mean, people are going to shift. I mean, Amazon employs a ton of people at Amazon proper and hundred what tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people at, at distribution and, yep. and all through the, the chain. So we were talking about the need for thinking local, the need, need and appreciation for your local butcher, your lo- local fishmonger. So there's going to be these roles that may be paid higher or glorified where Amazon comes in as this that last mile. It may be that ease of bringing it to you. Know, you know what you want. You don't want to go spend 30, 40 minutes at, at Whole Foods shopping. Um, and they'll also, and also uh, Whole Foods has the relationships with local farmers and whatnot. So if you're in a local area, now the algorithms, <laughs> which is a great thing, can connect you on Amazon with local produce delivered within an hour, which cuts down on waste. It cuts down. It, it, it could be limited. So it fulfills feeds those local farmers. Uh, there's no waste. They can plant. I mean, I think it's a, it's a win-win. I think it, you got to take it to fruition. It'll take a while, but to get there, um, I think this is a good thing overall. You know, you know what's interesting too is I was just talking with um, our friend Martin over at Cox Communications yesterday. I was hanging out with him a little bit and, um, and this week, and he was telling me, which, I mean, I know about Watson, from IBM, like I'm, I'm a little, I've seen enough. I know like the Jeopardy thing and, and the big blue beat Gary Kasparov back in the day in chess. And that was like moment one where everybody was like, Oh boy. Um, and then now, they, now it's like integrated into Dad, H and R block. I'm going to say something. Cool. Yes. Hey. Go for it. My daughter. Yeah. What is it? The podcast crowd. No, I've got a new guest. Go ahead. Put it in my ear. All right. Go ahead and say something. I made a big tower in the office. Oh, wait. We wanted to ask you a question. What do you think of the Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods? What do you think of the Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods? What do you think Alexa thinks of it? What do you think Alexa thinks of it? <laughs> you have him. You have Vincent silent. With your knowledge, he can't even reply to you right now because he's so he's so. Uh... There's some other sports news that's happening too that's blowing up, but um, that's that's occupying. I'm doing both uh, with, the, oh, with the Celtics. Well, I got friends texting me because the Celtics are about to trade the number one pick potentially this year, which is fine. But we won't get into that. Um, uh, the, maybe uh, maybe maybe it'll be streamed live on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> well, I think we beat this one enough. I mean, I. Well, no. What, what was we were just talking about? Um, Watson, real quick, like because yeah, he was he was uh, Martin was telling me he's like, there's all this stuff, and then you just brought up H and R Block. He told me that whole story. I didn't. I wasn't aware. H and R Block. Just real quick. H and R Block went, and and the CEO, essentially, just made a a decision on his own, without going through all the protocol and rigmarole. To acquire like 
Watt to, to, to use Watson's knowledge, integrate it and do everyone's taxes for H and R block. Um, cost a ton of money, but it was something like on average, people got an extra thousand dollar on their refund thousand dollars. And on their I assume refund. they still have people that they're meeting with one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. Yeah. And I, cause I think this is on like, like we had done H and R block before and you know, you go meet with someone and you right. go over things and right. they're still, they're using a computer. <laughs> they're using right. a computer in front of them. So it's just the fact that they're running everything through, um, through Watson, through the, the system. And prior to that, what they did was they took the entire tax code, right? Everything has to do with that and fed it into Watson and HR block did it. And, and so they, they just like that, that could, that would be humongous if that's working, which it is. I mean, it's, there's no question. It's accurate. Um, it's finding things that yeah. someone normally would as good of a, a, a tax person, someone might be uh, a CPA. Um, they, they could still miss things. And, and this thing like literally, doesn't miss anything. The, the other example he, he was telling me about was how with like just a, a drop of blood, a drop of blood compared to when you go to the doctor and they have to take like this huge blood sample and run it screenings from a drop of blood. It can, after again, feeding all this information, every single thing about like this, the example they used was this one particular type of cancer. Um, they Watson, fed in. Watson can do this. Watson can do this. They, it's done it. It's done so, it. Why do we need, why did we need Theranos? I mean, sorry, sorry. Well, right, right, right. Well, I mean, for whatever, we didn't. I mean, obviously that was a joke, but, um, but it, this, can t this could tell, it actually um, came back with like everything accurate on the money and better. The, the only difference, I guess, between the Watson kind of analysis and what the doctor's analysis was, was that Watson prescribed a different type of medication in some cases because it picked up that the other medication gotcha. would, would um, cross with like the other mixtures of the medications and the doctors wouldn't have picked that up. They said the doctors said this, the doctors said that they wouldn't have known that because it, it's, it's predictive. It's predictive analysis. It's their goal with Watson is to be able to, to know what you're going to do and what questions you're going to ask and what answers you're going to need, like two steps ahead of you're not even, it's not even in your wheelhouse whatsoever, but because of the predictive analysis and, and the information that it can yeah. consume and, and work off of it can, it knows like um, the last, here's the last example. Um, who are the people that potentially, you know, do startups a lot of times it's, it's like an older white male let's say and well why do they do a startup well because they got let go from their their position their job that they had for 20 years so they go and do a startup so then watson based on all this analysis and information can go and say well this company based on this you know within this many years is probably going to be letting this department go um hmm. and so this person or these people would be good candidates to do startups. So off of that, now you're talking about marketing and advertising. And if, if you can create touch points, if you know that that's potentially, or it's right. going to happen, right. And it's that predictive, then you can start touch touch points with these people before they even know that they need what you offer. Well, and there's, well, that's a very interesting. So it's insane. Say, it's insane. It's kind of it's Skynet. It's kind of, I was going to say Skynet is fully, <laughs> fully aware. <laughs> well, I, was gonna say that's, I, don't know, I don't know how they apply that. It's interesting because I know there's some companies that are, that are creating intrapreneurs. Yeah. Will actually um, allow people to take those risks inside of an organization and start new companies, new projects. Well, that's kind of like Google always had that 20% uh, yeah. program. <laughs> Watson is just going to do it for you. I wonder if like, why, why I was going to say, I wonder if, if Facebook's going to use Watson or they should use Watson. That's what I said then. <laughs> I was like, I the was like, why the, wouldn't, yeah, the news was they're going to, um, you know, fight basically terrorist propaganda and some other things. They can already do it. They said without like humans manning. Well, they it. said that with, with AI, but they said they yeah. would still need, um, 
115 people, cyber terrorist people, because there's going to be false positives. There's going to be sure. But they should just use Watson. It's a Facebook terrorist free, powered by Watson. <laughs> I mean, look how many billions is Facebook got? Like, why, why wouldn't that partnership happen? I, I I'm just trying to like talk out loud and be like, it, well, what, what would prevent that yeah. from happening? Just because it's IBM or, like, they wouldn't want a partner or not that they would buy them. It seems like if it's this intelligent, hopefully people are thinking this. Yeah. This could be applied to a whole range of issues. Oh. From um, education, kids falling through the loops to, you know, opioid, opioid addiction. I think, you know, the problems of this world, the problems of the, that surround us, I don't know how it would, but it seems yeah, if it's that predictive, it, it should be able to. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's unlimited application, I would think, if, if it can be that predictive of, you know, two steps ahead of all of us where we don't even know that we might, you know, turn a certain way <laughs> and, and, uh, and get into, like, bad things. I don't know. It, like, if, if it can predict if a kid or something is going to fall into, like, Wait, what is, movie was that? There was a movie uh, that, like, it would arrest you before you created the crime. Oh, minority minority report. Yeah, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking arrest you. I was thinking more of like, like kind of guide you a different path. Yeah, true. I mean, you even you know? see like, um, you know, the like videos of uh, makeovers of uh, people who are down and out and homeless, and just like what a new a shave and a new uh, set of clothes can do. I think like cities could implement Watson to save traffic. You know, solve traffic issues issues uh to get people on their feet like a lot of different issues i think like that that's like that there was that mark zuckerberg um was it a commencement speech one of the speeches he gave is about recently uh, yeah recently about solving all these huge world problems he's like we the human race and technology we can solve this yeah uh, this is definitely do we want to well yeah that's true definitely inspiring do people actually want to solve the problems but because really when you think think about it okay uh all these the medical things i mean that's always a knock on it right is like they're who's the yeah the medical community is the farm big pharma is trying to keep you sick because then you're going to keep buying the medicine and the and the pharmaceuticals and like how valid is that i mean there's it depends on who you ask True. right so it, perhaps still grassroots still yeah you know people going out there creating videos uh to inspire uh good point man well, I don't know. I don't know what else you want to talk about. This is a. Uh, it seems like every once in a while, and this is we're definitely where we want to go with the show. We do a lot of practical. We do a lot of like, you know, post this this way on Facebook. Check your analytics. Do this this way. Uh, we've tried this. This has really worked. Um, really to be useful and helpful to your your customer, your demo. Um, you anybody can utilize social, right? Yeah, that's the point. And every once in a while, we, we go future. We, we go, go more than hashtags. More than hashtags. Hashtags. Right. Well, let's look. If you want practical, right? Uh, yesterday in our video strategy for business presentation, we talked about a bunch of tools, right? Sure. Um, so Magisto. I don't know if you use Magisto. No, no, Adam. I I Magisto is an app. You, it lets you make really um, efficiently make pretty good videos um, that you can then use for your business. Um, YouTube director is potentially even better because it gives you the, all these templates for different types of, of videos. Um, it's an app. You go through, all you have to do is film the footage. It tells you exactly what to film. YouTube director? YouTube director. It, it gives you the templates. Like, so there's a template for a testimonial and then it says seven shots. And then it's a paragraph and says, you need to have someone here that's going to talk about such and such. And then as you go through it, it guides you and tells you exactly what goes in that shot. If it's a, like, here's how to line the person up because the graphic is over here and, and then it comes out. It's great. It's, it's very similar to like iMovie making the trailers and iMovie. If you follow yeah. um, making those and, and it makes it for you just as long as you get the right shots in there. This is, it's very similar to that, but it's, it's business and especially small business driven. Um, YouTube director, I would, I would highly recommend that and or Magisto is, and there's a lot of these apps, but those two are, are really 
solid. Yeah, I'll check. I heard of uh, the director one. I'll check out the first one. I haven't seen that. Magisto is uh, M A G I S T O. I mean, why not? I mean, if you're sometimes you you can get like a little brain freeze on creating videos, so definitely why not get some help in yeah. pre and post production. And that one will make the videos off of off of images too. Like you can, if you have like, it's almost like a slideshow you could do, but it's really nice and and pretty. There was one, uh, Animoto. Remember? I mean, it's Animoto is still out and around. Yep. That was was another one that we were, we uh, suggested yesterday too. I just haven't used that one very much. Um, Basically these tools are definitely, and are they cost anything? Are they free? No, as far as I, I mean, YouTube director is definitely free. Magisto, I'm not sure if it's free or has a freemium plus a pay. But they're all, I think it's free. I think it's free. I'll um, check it. And then if you, if you tie that into like Fiverr, you getting Fiverr. And the thing we were talking about was if you really want to go crazy and, and get like someone to read a short script that you write, there's people on Fiverr that will do that. They, they go, they're on there. They, they have a green screen of their own and they will put something on there that you give them like an image or something and they will record what you write. And now you have this video, you could pop that in the middle of all this. So it's, you could have a narrator or a, an expert. Yeah. Gives me a good idea actually <laughs> for like a very uh, resource strapped teams. Uh, Absolutely. You want to help promote your product or service. Uh, and Fiverr gets, I think has a little, a, a weird, uh, rap because i think a lot of people know of it as being just the five dollar service and it's it's not just that you can get a lot of stuff for five bucks but that's what it starts at for a lot of the the services and i'm sure like it's very simple but what i like about it is as as a lot of different platforms there's ratings so it Mm -hmm. helps sort out who really is the best of the best it does And, and actually a lot of these people get um they could sell additional services or get long term clients um, it al- allows them to prove themselves. Uh, yeah, I think it does get a bad rap, but you'll tell you what, outlaying a ton of cash and being really disappointed. Uh. <laughs> it's worse. I mean, why, if, look, it's worth it. And then you can even, like you said, the long-term clients, absolutely that happens. Like if you find someone on there, you can then go back to that person for a similar request again. Like if you do a lot of website design, let's say, and part of what you want to do is logo design, there's some really, really good logo design people on there that it may not be five, right. but it'll be like 30 or 60 bucks, which is still sure. nothing. And they give you five different designs that you can then pick from and revise. Yep. You know, so it's, it's totally worth checking into ignore the people with the horse heads dancing with the happy <laughs> birthday signs and bikinis. That's, I mean, that's got a place too. Uh, but, uh, but there's a lot of business uses for, for Fiverr, which is with two R's. 5rr.com. Oh, I thought it was just ER. No, without the ER. No, there's an E. There's an E. Man, what what happens when we run out of names? (laughs) Letters. I don't know. Letters, numbers, emojis. Emojis. There's rabbit trail there. That's cool. Well, I guess all we're saying is these tools are out there. Uh, And we want to recommend them to make them accessible. So good stuff, man. Uh, I think next week I'd really like to dive into um, analytics, analytics for Google, Twitter, Facebook, uh, let people know that these free tools are out there yep. and really help you um, optimize the content you share every day. Or and they're accurate. Yeah. They're accurate because they're native inside each platform. So let's like, you know what? Let's let be the question of the day because we're going to dive into the tools we know. But if you're out there every day doing this already, what are, what analytic tools do you use, or what are your favorite social media analytic tools that you go to day to day, week to week, month to month? Tweet us at hashtags pod or at Adam Lidecker. or me at Vincent Orlek. Not a guru. Yeah, that's just. <laughs> That's not my handle though. My handle is my name. I, I thought it was for a while. Every t- I still to this day, every once in a while, I go and search at not a guru. It's not you. Well, if you, I think if you search not a guru, because I have the hashtag on my it profile, up. it'll come up. My daughter. Yes, my daughter. I agree. Tell her I agree. What? You heard the song? No, I don't know. I'm just agreeing. Oh, she's trying to get. Uh, I can't say it. It will trigger it. She's trying to get her Amazon Echo to play the greatest by Sia because it's like 
Say the greatest I see ya. It's like her favorite song. It's like her rally song. Dad, can you put it on? Sure can, and we'll and we'll close out the show. Alexa, play the greatest by Sia. The greatest, the greatest. <laughs> That's it, guys. It's yes yeah. plan from Spotify, right? Because we it's not. we did that. Alexa, yeah. turn it up. <laughs> oh, you have headphones on. Don't no, you? where were you? You triggered. Oh, you were on um behind the domain Bowser. with Heather. Yeah, yeah, behind the domain. And, and, and I was watching. I was I was watching on Facebook Live with no headphones. And with no headphones, and you mentioned it, and you triggered. Uh, I mean, you you could have really done Heather. me in. You could have said buy X Y Z. Oh, oh, it was Jeopardy. And it actually did start. She duck came on. It was hilarious. Man, she wants this. She wants this. This is her jam. That's it, guys. Be the greatest this week. We'll see you next week. This is more than hashtags. Thanks for joining us. Later. Thank you, Vin- Thank you Vincent. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Great